So a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on uh, simulation of communication systems. We have covered two chapters namely introduction to MATLAB and uh, the use of MATLAB for various uh, matrix related operations and uh, deterministic signal analysis. So now we will move on to the third part or the third unit or the third chapter whatever you want to call it of this course Monte Carlo simulations. So in this chapter we will basically revisit probability and random variables we will talk about random numbers and their generations see how these random numbers are different from random variables and uh, we look at uh, some special distributions and uh, finally we will verify the laws of large numbers using matlab so this will be done using So, but first we will uh, spend some time revisiting ideas from probability theory that are uh, absolutely necessary for uh, continuing with this course. So we will first start off by defining a random experiment or uh, we will uh, in this uh, revisit of probability theory we will start off by revisiting basic ideas of uh, probability theory. So, a random experiment as the name says is random or a random experiment is an experiment that has more than one possible outcomes and you do not know what will be the outcome before you conduct do not know what will be the outcome before you conduct that experiment. Example. tossing a coin, rolling a die. So if we consider tossing a coin or rolling a die as uh, experiments, each time you toss a coin you do not know before you toss the coin unless obviously the coin is rigged that uh, will you get a head or a tail. And like uh, even if you roll a die you do not know beforehand what number will you get. So tossing a coin, rolling a die are random experiments contrast these to deterministic experiments where you know that uh, what will be the outcome. So for example, you mix one mole of uh, hydrochloric acid and uh, one mole of sodium hydroxide do not try this at home. You will get one mole of salt and one mole of water. Please do not try this at home, but uh, this is a determinist experiment. You give fixed amounts of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, both are highly toxic and uh, unsuited for uh, domestic use and you mix them and you will not get any fewer than or any more than one mole of common salt and uh, incidentally common salt and water are uh, both harmless, but hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide are uh, both highly dangerous chemicals. So, please uh, do not try this at home, but uh, the point is that before you conduct this experiment, so know the outcome before you this and you here when you toss a coin or you roll a die you do not know the outcome before you conduct this. So now 
the question would be that we are talking about communication systems. How is uh, this uh, random experiment uh, relevant to it? So, we will answer that uh, question eventually, but uh, in short I could uh, before we start this discussion, I should mention that information. So, communication systems are uh, all about uh, transmitting information from one point to another and information by its nature is random. So, in order to understand uh, information properly, we should understand uh, randomness properly and that is why we will be spending some time discussing randomness and how to generate randomness using MATLAB. So, that said, now for random experiments, experiments we have the notion of probability that uh, a random experiment has multiple outcomes. We want to associate a probability with each outcome or uh, even if we do not know what is the outcome before we conduct an experiment, we should know that okay, if we toss a coin then what we know is half the times uh, a head will come up, uh, half of the times it, a tail will come up unless again the coin is loaded or if you roll a die one sixth of the times uh, you will get a 1, one sixth of the times you will get a 2 and so on. If you play Russian roulette, uh, there is a finite probability that uh, there will be a bullet in it. So, please again do not uh, play Russian roulette and uh, with this, so a random experiment has multiple outcomes and only one of which is likely in the end. So, in that context we define a sample space. So, a random experiment can have multiple outcomes, but only one of these outcomes be true, but only one of these outcomes will be true if the experiment is actually conducted, we want to know which of these outcomes will occur and with what we want to know which of these outcomes will occur and with what probability. For that, we define the idea of a sample space. So, the sample space of a random experiment is the set of all the possible outcomes of that is the set of all the possible outcomes of that experiment. For example, if we consider the tossing of a coin as a random experiment, then the sample space S will be head and tail. If we consider the rolling of the die as an experiment, say, then the sample space will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes, 5. So, if uh, we consider rolling of die as an experiment, this is the sample space, the number of dots, this is generally represented using dots. If we talk about the weather and consider temperature as uh, our parameter for uh, measuring the weather, then the space of the temperature say 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius whatever or 0 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius whichever way you want to it uh, would be the sample space. So, the sample space constitutes all the outcomes of a random experiment and 
the sample space can be discrete that is it can be a discrete set that talks about the outcomes of discrete valued experiments such as the toss of a coin or uh, the roll of a die. So, these are the examples and it can be the continuous uh, variety say a continuous sample space or uh, a continuous valued random experiment can be the time in seconds between two successive decays of nuclei in a uranium 235, 235 is unstable sample or plutonium 230 any radioactive element. So, two successive nuclear decays, uh, nuclear decay sounds slightly ominous. So, let us say two successive decay of nuclei in a uranium 235 sample. So, it can be 1.001 second, 1.002 seconds, 1.000 or means 0, 0.000 something seconds. So, it all depends. So, the sample space or the a continuous sample space is like the set of real numbers. can be finite or infinite and a discrete sample space can also be finite or infinite. So, a discrete sample space or one important thing that I should mention here is that should this and I will possibly create a another box here I should write that here. So, a discrete sample space sample space will always have a countable number of outcomes and a continuous sample space will have an uncountable number of outcomes. Fine. So, a discrete sample space will have a continuous countable number of outcomes and the continuous sample space will have an uncountable number of outcomes. So, that said we will come on to the next idea that is events. So, an event is a mathematically I am just uh, going about uh, the mathematical definition I will talk about the colloquial details of events later. So, an event is a subset of the sample space. So, an event E for a random experiment having a sample space S, the event E is defined as a subset of S. So, say you roll a die and if a possible event can be the outcome is an odd number. So, that contains 3 outcomes or uh, that refers to 3 odd outcomes 1, 3 and 5 you say that the outcome is greater than 3 that again pertains to 3 outcomes or you say that uh, the outcome is a prime number. So, there can be many even for this uh, small sample space of 6 outcomes there can be many ways to define events. So, you can say that uh, in the event the outcome is a an odd number the in the event the outcome is an even number. So, an event is a subset of the sample space. So, obviously, a subset would contain in the case of a discrete sample space 
a subset would contain all the possible singleton outcomes, but uh, nonetheless an event will always be a subset of the sample space. So, that said, so similarly when we talk about a, a continuous uh, sample space, we might say that let us talk about the decay of nuclei. When we talk about uh, continuous sample spaces, we cannot say that uh, the decay of uh, two subsequent nuclei or uh, the this first nucleus will decay at uh, one exactly 1.9526 some real number seconds is you would generally say that it is this would decay somewhere between 1 and 1 1.5 seconds or you can say 1 and 1.2, 1.2 and 1.5. So, when you talk about uh, continuous sample space, you cannot give an exact value. When you have an uncountable, when an experiment has an uncountable number of outcomes, you cannot pinpoint one exact outcome. You would rather say that the outcome will be said range, rather say that the outcome will be approximately this or would be in a said range. Obviously, the more precise you want to be about the outcome, the smaller uh, will that range be or suppose you have a pin and uh, you have put a pin on a circle, suppose you have this thing, and put this and uh, you rotate it randomly and you want to know where it will stop or where the arrowhead will stop. So, say you start at this is theta equals 0 and you rotate it and you want its uh, stopping point. So, naturally uh, the stopping point will be any angle between 0 and 2 pi or minus pi and pi whichever way you want it or whichever way you choose to label it, but uh, you cannot pinpoint the exact angle that uh, it will stop at. You would say that uh, it will stop between somewhere between pi by 4 and pi by 2 or pi by 3 and pi by 6 something like that you will have to uh, give it a range. So, and this range is in the form of a set. So, this range is in the form of a set. So, because of that when we talk about the discrete sample spaces we can write uh, events as subsets of uh, the sample space when we talk about continuous sample spaces we can write events as subsets of the sample space. So, that way we can call events as uh, subsets of the sample space. So, the next question would be the idea of an event space. So, before we move further I should uh, add another slide and talk about the event space. So, let us talk about the So, the event space of a random experiment whose sample space is given by S is the collection of all the subsets of the sample space or rather in simpler words it is the collection of
events that can happen with respect to that collection of all the possible events that can happen with respect to that sample space fine. So, this is how you define an event or this is how you define the event space. So, the event space is generally defined as this and in case of a discrete sample space, the event space is the in case of discrete sample space, the event space is the power set of the discrete sample space, the event space is the power set of the sample space which is straightforward and the next thing we will talk about is a probability measure. So, so a probability measure is a measure assigned to an event. So, the measure assigned to an event in the event space of a random experiment. So, the probability measure is the measure assigned to a to an event in the event space of a random experiment such that for an event E in the event space. So, this is the event space. So, an event E in the event space probability of E lies between such that probability of equal to 1 if or rather probability of the null set this is the null set probability of the null set equal to 0 and probability of the sample space equal to 1. So, this is the probability measure and uh, it has certain properties. One, E, so since events are sets, this and we define the complement of an event is the complement e that is sample space lie and probability of E complement equals 1 minus probability of E and uh, we should define uh, two special events, two special form of events before we end this lecture. Uh, slide and define two special form of events. One, mutually exclusive events. So, two events E and F are said to be mutually exclusive 
if the occurrence of one of them excludes or negates the probability of uh, the occurrence of another. For example, say E in the role of a die in an exa example in the role of a die let E be the event that the outcome is an even number greater than 2 or greater than equal to 3. So, this means that event E talks about uh, these events and let F denote the case that outcome is a prime number. So, the outcome so, let f denote the case that uh, or f denote the event that the outcome is a prime number. Then this equals 2, 3, 5. So, naturally E intersection f is the null set because uh, there is nothing common between E and f and naturally we have defined f such that f is not the complement of E. So, E intersection f is the null set and hence probability of E intersection f is 0. Now, E intersection f physically it means that both the events E and f occur. So, the event E intersection F says that both E and F occur and uh, when E and F are mutually exclusive means that uh, the occurrence of E automatically negates the occurrence of F or uh, the occurrence of E automatically implies that F does not occur. In that case, probability of E intersection F equals probability of the null set equals 0. So, if E and F are mutually exclusive events then probability of E intersection F is 0. So, this, so these are mutually exclusive events. So, mutually exclusive events are events that or whose occurrence negates the probability of existence of the other event. So, this the next thing that uh, I had not initially planned to cover, but uh, I believe that uh, it will be incorrect to continue without it is conditional probability. So, we will quickly introduce the idea of conditional probability and uh, then uh, we will uh, end this lecture. So, I will quickly introduce conditional probability. and conditional probability and dependence. So, these ideas are needed for later use. So, let us quickly introduce conditional probability and independence. So, the probability or probability of E given F is called probability of the occurrence of E given that F has already occurred. So, suppose again we will keep things simple over here and uh, continue with the example of the role of a die. So, suppose die is rule and 
you know that the outcome is an even number. So, you have rolled a die and you have been told that uh, the outcome is an even number, but you have, have not been told that number. So, in this case what happens is the that your sample space f or say you have said that so there is an event f such that the outcome number so the probability or uh, as soon as you declare that the outcome is an even number the probability or the sample space space now reduces to f the sample space now reduces to f so when the sample space reduces to f what happens is that now all the other events or the other events can occur only when f has already occurred so we define probability of e given f as probability of e f divided by probability of f that is the probability of e given f is defined as so this is probability that and f will both occur the probability that e and f will both occur and this is the probability that that f has this is the probability that f has already occurred so in this case probability e given f is say given that the outcome is an even number what is the probability that uh, the outcome is 4. So, basically what you will do is you take the probability of uh, the outcome being an even number and uh, the outcome being 4 and divide that being by the probability of the outcome being an even number. So, you will get 1 over 3. What is the probability that uh, the outcome is 1 given that the outcome is an even number. So, in that case you know that the outcome being an even number the event of the outcome being an even number excludes the event that uh, it can be an odd number. So, it uh, excludes of its possibility of being 1. So, that and uh, that is how you define this and this also helps us define the idea of total probability. in terms of Schnell. This also helps us define the idea of total probability in terms of conditional probability that uh, probability of E equals probability of E given F times probability of f plus e given f complement times probability of f complement that is the probability of an event e occurring is the probability that E occurs when F has occurred times the probability that F has occurred plus the probability that E occurs when 
f has not occurred times the probability that f is not occurred. So, this is how you define the total probability of an event in terms of uh, a conditional probability. So, naturally this leads us to the idea of independent events. So, so, this leads us to the idea of independent events. So, naturally when you talk about conditional probability, you see that uh, probability of E given F is equal to E intersection F divided by probability of F. So, uh, you start off with this, when you start off with this idea, you see that, so, so conditioning actually increases probability. So, let us not uh, go into that discussion right now, rather what let us do is, so the occurrence of F or rather the knowledge of occurrence of F changes the probability of occurrence of E, right? The occurrence of F changes the probability of occurrence of E, say we consider uh, the roll of a die and uh, the knowledge that you have had an even number changes the probability of occurrence of all the events. But uh, let me ask a slightly different question. Say I toss a coin and I roll a die and uh, what is the probability of getting a heads if the outcome is an even number? Independent, not affected. Uh, so, the roll of the die does not affect the toss of the coin. So, in case the occurrence or non-occurrence of the event f does not affect the probability of occurrence of the event E, then E and F are called independent events and probability of E given F equals probability of E for all F, probability of E. So, in case E and F are independent, then probability of E given F equals probability of E given F complement. That F, the probability of occurrence of E is not affected by the occurrence or non-occurrence of F. For independent events, the sure shot test or for two events to be mutually independent of each other, the sure shot test is probability of E intersection F as you can see equals probability of E times probability of F. So, the sure shot test for uh, two events to be mutually independent is that the probability of E should be independent of probability of F or the occurrence of E should be independent of occurrence of F or the probability of their joint uh, occurrence is the product of their individual probabilities of occurrence, fine. So, that said, uh, we close this lecture here and uh, in the next lecture, we will talk about Bayes theorem and its implications. Thank you. Mm -hmm.